Hi everyone, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. I've been meaning to go down a an alleyway that runs by the side of my house and there's this little patch where these snowdrops have been growing and I've been meaning to get there for weeks and weeks and weeks and I haven't. When I finally got round, well the plants are a little dishevelled and past the best shall we say. Um, so this is what I've ended up with, which isn't great, you know, it's, it's okay but it's not great, it's not something I'd ordinarily keep, it's just something I'd go through the motions and then file it away and probably delete it in a few weeks time but I figured we'd try and do something a little different um, make the most of it so first thing I'm going to do is control J to make a copy and on this copy we're going to go filter oil paint now I generally have a pretty routine numbers that I put in here and they don't vary wildly uh, stylization is usually up at the top. It's probably more authentic down the bottom. As you can see, it's more of a, a stippled effect to it. And as you stylize it, it gets a little bit more liney and arty. The cleanliness, um, you generally find which right down again, it's a more of a stippled effect. And all the way up, it's you know more like really pronounced brush strokes. Um, so you'll generally find somewhere round about the middle is a happy medium. The scale is the size of the actual strokes. If you push them right up, it tends to look like an of wallpaper rather than uh, canvas. So again, I keep this down pretty low. Bristle detail, you can play with this if you, if you wish to, but to be honest, I see very little difference in the picture. Um, I think it makes more of a difference depending on the settings above. I just generally leave it at 10 and don't bother with it. The direction, you can change the direction in which the strokes are generally going. Um, for this one I think you know around about the 300 mark is fine but it would depend on the photo uh, if you have a a light source that's very pronounced on one side changing direction may make a big difference to the way it looks and this is one that people generally overdo the shine at the bottom um, you can push this right up to get this like edge glow around them and I, I don't like it personally um, I think it just spoils the effect so I generally keep around to like the 2 mark um, and that works for me. But again, it is personal taste. You know, just because these are the settings I'm using, there's nothing to say you can't use your own settings. And it will depend on the photo. So I'm going to click OK on that. And I'm just going to drop the opacity slightly, because that's why we put on its own layer, so we could change it about a little bit. And yeah, I'm liking that effect. I think that's OK. Now we could stop here, and that could be it. Done and dusted. Uh, but we do always have other choices and other things we can do so I'm going to copy this texture paste it into the picture Control T to transform and it's going to drag this out to fill roughly the same area and we're going to change the blending mode of this to overlay and we're going to drop the opacity to around about 50% something like that 49 that'll do. So now we've got this kind of old world textured look, you know, it's like a vintage oil painting that's been creased and folded. Uh, but it is a little bit intense colour wise because of the blending mode. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a saturation adjustment at the top there. And I'm going to drop this to around about minus 30. because if we're trying to create something that looks like it's aged and old it stands to reason it would have faded a bit over time as well so there you have it you've gone from standard photo by that oil paint effect our texture and just subdued the colours a little bit and once again you could also do another copy you could have your colour copy and you could also do a black and white now if you go into the black and white adjustments obviously you want to be looking at the colours within the picture before the black and white so the yellows will play quite heavily into things um, as will the greens uh, you know you can tweak these to your heart's content and you know get something that you like um, and you can either save the PSD file as is and keep all these layers here and you can keep coming and tinkering and playing around with them and just save as when you've got a formulation that works uh, like this for example you'll just do file save as and you'll save it as a JPEG so therefore you'll have a JPEG version of this photo 
but you'll still have your PSD file intact with all these changes that you can keep going into and manipulating and changing. I mean, you could put a you know a sepia overlay on this if you wanted to. It's just something else that creates a little bit of interest, something else for you to play about with, and to make the most out of material that you have, even if it's not going to achieve what you first intended it to. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Once again, if you remember, you can download the start image along with the texture file from the website. Till the next time, bye for now.